Well, you guys are the best. There's no other way to put it. 9.05 on a uh, Thursday morning across Kansas City. Ray Stevens will be here at 10, and he's got uh, Chris Stapleton tickets at 10.15 to give away. June 12th, next year, T-Mobile Center. So one of you just just sent this to me. Uh, headline from Fox 4, and it follows up our interview with Greg Trees, CEO in Kansas City, who had that letter that, uh, frankly, we made news yesterday by sharing it publicly, that he had sent to the chamber and other business leaders in town, basically saying, hey, you guys are making this situation untenable downtown. you got to clean up. The homelessness, you got to clean up the crime, and we're leaving for Overland Park when our lease is up. I didn't realize it was not up for seven years, though. It's going to be a long, long seven years. Um, And the end of the conversation resulted in me asking him how upset he was by the chamber being in Frankfurt, Germany this week. So we'll get to that here in a second. But one of you just noted here, Fox 4 article, worker has truck stolen within hours of arriving in Kansas City. A railroad worker had been in Kansas City for only a couple of hours when his truck was stolen overnight. In the 48 hours that followed, the truck has been spotted everywhere from Liberty to Grandview and has been part of police pursuits and multiple reported crimes. The man, who asked to be referred to as Kevin, lives in Indiana. He checked into a Kansas City motel outside of Liberty late Sunday night. But when he went to his truck Monday morning, it was gone. Kevin says he's been told by those that were able to view surveillance video that the theft happened within two hours of him parking it. He said, I went to grab my hard hat out of my truck and my truck was gone. I'm like, where's my truck? He posted photos in the Facebook group Stolen KC that day. (laughs) What's it say that we got a Facebook group called Stolen KC? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Are you a member, John? Uh, I know it exists. I know I, why it exists. I, yeah. I, I, I yeah. didn't realize we had that group. Jeez. Uh, lots of tools on there, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sure. No, I mean, actually, people oh. stealing tools and toolboxes. I should have specified <laughs> a little more clearly. Right? I'm, I'm sure there's lots of tools <laughs> figuratively. Work, man, they, they lose their toolboxes, job boxes, oh, everything. Man. Wow. Okay. I didn't realize that. Within hours, there was another post of someone else looking for that truck for a completely different reason. A woman posted that her Mercedes GLC 300 had been stolen in Grandview with her debit card inside. She said, then they went to Raytown, Missouri in my truck with her card and tried to buy lottery tickets with her debit card. Boy, how, gosh, does that say a lot about people? All right, I got a debit card. What am I going to do? I'm going to buy lotto tickets for a one in a 200 million chance of, you know, winning a few bucks. And a carton of luckies. Yeah. (laughs) What a bunch of. Just complete dopes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just morons. I know they're criminals, so they're morons to begin with. But like, oh, man, I stole this car. We got a debit card to boot. What are we going to go buy? Lotto What's tickets. What's that OnlyFans site? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribing to Megan and Sinclair. Lottery ticket. yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. brother. The Mercedes, the same car thief may have stolen, has since been recovered, but Kevin's truck has not been. He isn't solely relying on social media to find it. He's taking time off from work to try to track it down himself. So now you got vigilantes driving around town. Because literally, we don't have the police force to do this kind of stuff. I'm not saying the police department's not helping. I'm sure they are in some way. But man, they're, they're, they're short-staffed, and they got 157 homicides to figure out. Trending towards a record year for murders in this town. You think they got time for a guy who just showed up two hours ago and then got his truck stolen? Welcome to Kansas City, by the way. Hope you enjoy your time mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Yeesh. He says that he spent 20 hours driving around trying to find his truck. Tuesday night, as he came upon a crash scene on Truman under the uh, Blue Ridge Boulevard, he spotted the truck. He said, I saw it. A bunch of cops and a tow truck driver saw it. and The cops tried to spike strip it. They missed, then chased it and lost it. With no plans on how he'll get home without his truck, he's hoping someone might recognize him and call the police. It's a black and tan Ford F-250, 2006 King Ranch with a hitch. 20-inch wheels. And if they haven't been swapped out, it will have Indiana license plate TK-789-OIU. He says the whole experience has soured his perception of Kansas City. 
or at least a handful of car thieves who are wrecking havoc on the lives of dozens of people in the Kansas City metro every day. Now, this comes, this story from Fox 4 yesterday comes on the same day that this is written by the Kansas City Star. It says, Kansas City is a top location for vehicle theft in the United States, according to data from the National Insurance Crime Bureau. An insurance, in- <coughs> excuse me, an insurance industry group with a stated mission of combating car insurance fraud. Last year, Missouri ranked seventh in the nation for vehicle thefts by state. And uh, in the first half of 2023, the state saw a 3% increase. Kansas City, Kansas didn't make the list of top 10 states for vehicle theft last year or this year. The metro area saw a significant increase, ranking 10th in the nation with around 573 thefts per 100,000 residents. The most commonly stolen vehicles in Missouri and Kansas are similar, but not exactly the same. Large pickup trucks are a common target for car thieves, with Ford pickups leading the list in both states. And vehicles from Hyundai, Honda, and Chevrolet are also popular targets. I I mean, it's another thing on the list. I had a buddy of mine... He just moved uh, jobs. He's working downtown by Union Station. And he said his friend was bragging about his new car literally last week. And like two days after he bought his new car, they worked down right by Union Station, Liberty Memorial, the whole thing. Car was gone. Car was stolen. Now, I haven't followed up with him since. I don't know if they got the car back, if they found it. They had it on video surveillance of the car being stolen. But I don't know if they ever found the guy. I have no idea. But let's be honest, if you're going to be moving your businesses or you're going to be looking at where to have your businesses, where you want your employees going, does that sound like the best bet for them right now? I mean, it's cool to have a nice address, I guess. That's something Quentin Lucas noted on the show this morning. But having a cool address, that's great uh, until your car gets taken away. 913-408-7957 is our studio line and our text line here on KCMO. Now on your FM dial at 95.7. I want to welcome you into the conversation here because it's something that many of you have dealt with. And also something, credit to Fox 4. You know, credit where it's due. It's one of those things that does not get nearly enough attention. Ken is in Independence. What's up, Ken? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, a couple months ago, uh, my uh, car, it was an Elantra. Uh, it got stolen. There was the one parked right next to mine, but they took mine. And uh, the Independence Police found it four days later. And I went to the impound where it was at. They uh, took all four tires. They had, uh, like, they lived in the car, but uh, when they found the car, it was uh, north of Inglewood, and they arrested, or, uh, you know, six people living in this house. Uh, three of them with the address on their driver's license, the other ones, uh, Kansas City uh, addresses. But there was photocopies, uh, license plates in the car. They had a paper uh, photocopy of a dealer license plate that they had put on the back of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a baby stroller, a U-Haul bag full of tools, empty cigarette packs, a case of orange soda, sex toys. Uh, it was just those were yours, were they, Ken? No, no, the, I didn't leave those behind. <laughs> but uh, no, but it was like it's like uh, you know, four days later, uh, at least the Independence Police found my car. Uh, you know, then uh, it was a month before State Farm uh, settled uh, with me. But the ironic was a week uh, before they stole it, I got a letter in the mail from the dealer saying, "Come in and update your software." Which, we're supposed to help uh, mm-hmm. them not, you know, steal the uh, the Elantra cars. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it's just a nightmare. You go out to work in the morning and your car's not there, and thought your wife parked it in a different spot. Uh, well, it's a perfect. I, here's the thing. It. Th- thank you, Ken. You're right. It's a perfect storm, man. Yeah. It's a perfect storm because you've got a combination of being in a county where criminals are not deterred by the prosecutor. We've known that for years now. And then you have these cars, uh, you know, the pickup trucks are big targets because of their worth. But then obviously the Kias and the Hyundais are targets because, uh, you know, they have these, I guess, safety security systems that people have figured out how to hack. Yeah, what it is is when you remove the key, there's a USB port. 
Oh, don't, so let's, not, let's they, not start telling the criminals how to do their job sorry, here, Ken. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, mean, jeez. Well, the whole thing is, I, I'm sure it's still floating out there on TikTok or YouTube, yeah. and why haven't they taken that down? Well, that's a great point. I, I'm not going to... I, here's the thing. I'm not going to have any confidence in TikTok doing what's in the best interest of anybody. It's run by the Chinese Communist Party indirectly. So hard pass on that. But Ken did not deny, have, did not deny having a stable of sex toys, most importantly. He just said that the ones that were found weren't his. So there's the moral of that story. 913-408-7957. As we hit 915, Ray Stevens at 10. He's got Chris Stapleton tickets in one hour. We'll keep this conversation going with you because I know uh, there are many of you out there who are dealing with the stolen vehicle problem. And another issue, we're happy to carry the torch on this thing, but media doesn't want to touch it. But they'll do fluff stories on who's going to Frankfurt this weekend. Don't don't you miss that. 913-408-7957. It's uh, 920 on a Thursday morning. So you got this story from Fox 4 that uh, credit to them for doing, talking about how a guy showed up to work here in Kansas City. And within two hours, he was coming from Indiana. His car got stolen. And this came hours after the Kansas City Star had a piece showing that KC ranks among the top 10 cities for car theft. So it, once again, it's just it's starting to get a little more attention. These are all issues that we've been talking about for months on end at this point. But um, you've got a voice in all this at 913-408-7957. Kevin's in Mission. What's up, Kevin? Hey, Pete. Love your show. Thanks, brother. What's happening? And I've got a story for you. My opinion of downtown and safety has soured lately. Uh, we have four kids. We're big Dave Ramsey fans. And so we're making our 18-year-old son pay his way through college, and we think that's good for him. So he's been working hard, saved up, bought his own car. I got a call from him about a month ago, and his car had gotten stolen down near the Nelson. And it was about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, he waited about three hours for the police to show up, um, and he could he tracked his car down because he had his school backpack, his laptop in the car, so he could you know, find my phone, and was able to. He was parked outside a house a few blocks away where his car was parked. So he called the police, waited for about three hours. I told him, "Don't go near it. You know, don't go up to the house. You're going to get you know into danger." And the police got there. He was able to recover his car. Um, he could tell that the laptop was inside the house with his backpack, all of his books that he paid, you know, money for himself. And the police said, sorry, nothing we can do um, about any of that stuff inside the house, even though a bunch of his property was inside the house. Got his car back. They had poured liquor all over the front seats. And so he was really discouraged and it really uh made us pretty mad obviously so it was really disappointing um he was upset with the police i tried telling him hey the police's hands are you know their their hands are tied i called one of my good friends who used to be a detective in the metro just for advice i said hey should we pursue this and he said no nope, let it go there's nothing you can do um he said he used to be a detective i think he said something like we had about 74 detectives we're down to 30 something and they were, we've, you know, been told to stand down and essentially not pursue any pro- property crimes. Wow. We just don't have the manpower for it. So it was really discouraging. And he was out, his, all of his school books, his back, backpack, laptop, clothes, a um, bunch of other stuff that was in his car and got his car back, but it was trashed. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wow. That's, uh, boy, that's disappointing. But I'll tell you what, that's a heck of a lesson for an 18 year old, right? On multiple fronts. Absolutely. Don't keep your car downtown. And <laughs> if you're going to do it, don't leave anything in sight. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, know, keep it exactly. Locked, stuff in your trunk, you know, and basically I told him just to, uh, to the best of his ability, stay away from downtown. Well, what a know? shame, right? He wants to, I don't know what he was doing down there at the uh, Nelson Atkins Museum, but he's down there, I'm sure, for a reason. You know, he's probably yeah. down there for a good cause, uh, spending money, whatever. And uh, now he's got a sour perception of it. And you got an 18 year old kid who's never going to forget something like that. Yeah. His girlfriend, uh, his folks live there. Uh, they, they moved from a small town in Missouri. They bought a house down there and mm-hmm. I haven't talked to him, but I imagine they're having a little bit of buyer's remorse because they're having to, um, I think the crimes more than 
maybe what they thought it was going to be. Jeez, I feel for them. Gosh, well, we appreciate you sharing that, Kevin. Thank you, man. Yeah, be safe. All right, you as well. I mean, that's imagine that, 18 years old, right? Welcome to the big leagues, kid. You're going to learn that lesson the hard way. Now, I got pickpocketed when I was 13, 14. Eh, I must have been 14. I had a summer trip that I did in Washington, D.C., and I was taking a bus back from Washington, D.C. to the Port Authority in New York City. So this would have been uh, 20-something years ago now. And, you know, this is obviously pre-cell phone. I got to go to a pay phone. I got to call my folks, say, I'm, you know, I'm here, I'm there, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I don't know, some guy comes up to me, hey, you need help there, kitty? I'm like, yeah, where are the pay phones? Points me towards the pay phones. Next thing I do, I had no money for the pay phone. <laughs> Wallet, I think it was in my back pocket, and it was no longer there. So, you know, it's, and that's much more minor than what, uh, Kevin's kid was dealing with at 18. Drive downtown and you get your car stolen, laptop, phone, everything else. But, uh, you know, those are life lessons that you won't forget for better or for worse. I'll tell you that right now. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad that Kevin also said to his kid, hey, don't be mad at the cops here, buddy. There's one group of people to be mad at, and that's the damn criminals. It's a weird feeling when your cop, your car is stolen, you walk out and you're like, did it roll down the street? And you're <laughs> looking around like an idiot going, I know you parked it here, but... Yeah, I've had two cars stolen, and my son's had his car stolen twice. Each time it is recovered, so I know people are disheartened when there's not an immediate response, but they're not going to get it in hot pursuit, but they will put out the uh, be on the lookout, the bolo, and they do find him. And so four times I've been down to the tow lot to wow. look at the damage, you know. But you're I didn't get any free stuff like our first caller did. I got <laughs> a lot of stuff missing, but, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, they, they tend to recover them, but uh, they're not going to find them in immediate hot pursuit. No, yeah, not at all. Uh, let's go to Jim and KCK. What's up, Jim? Go ahead. You're on KCMO 95.7 FM. Hello. All right, Jim, the floor is yours. I got a minute there, big boy. Okay, they stole my car, and it was, it was captured in hot pursuit, and the names of the individuals that the, the stole my car were identified. And I asked one of the police officers, are they going to have a court date with these fellows? They said, well, they were in jail, but they, were, they, were, they already have been let out. The problem is the prosecutor will not prosecute these guys. Mm-hmm. You know the names of the people who stole your car? And I think there should, there, there should be some kind of uh, website where the police should, should should print the names or identify the names of people who steal cars. And they should be put in jail and prosecuted, not let go. Well, I, thank you, Jim. Out, they will go out and do the same thing again. You know, the prosecutors will well, yeah. yeah, no. go out and do the same thing again. You're right, Jim. they got to get the prosecutors to make sure they're prosecuting criminals. I agree. That's one of the big problems that we've got right now. Prosecutors have this soft on crime the real victims are the criminals who are victims of society. We let them down. See, that's how it gets spun. Criminals are the real victims in the eyes of progressive DAs because the criminals, well, they got screwed by society. We let them down as a country, as a state, as a city, and they're just responding to the situation that we put them in. It's all BS. I mean, I, you know, we get that, but that's the mentality. And that's why, especially when it's petty theft, like, I mean, not petty theft, but you know what I mean. You're not talking about homicides. Uh, They're slapping these people on the wrist and they just keep doing it because the consequences don't exist.